We ready? Oh yeah, we are. Okay, mother effers, <laughs> we got you for one hour. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Wolf Den, live from the Long Island Retro Gaming Expo at the Cradle of Aviation here in Garden City, Long Island. Yeah. <sighs> oh, hello. How's everyone doing? This is very weird because this it's, is... it's very tall. Yes. I'm afraid of heights, <laughs> and I have to look up really high it's, at all. <laughs> it's very, it, this is a dome. I feel very <laughs> tiny right now. I, I've see, I'm used to sitting up there. For mm. movies, and this is not a great place to see movies, by the way. Um, but this is a whole, whole another level. So, the biggest IMAX theaters you can get, yeah, they're all domes, right? Mm. A traditional IMAX is six stories tall, straight. Okay. This is not traditional IMAX. Okay. I don't even think this is six stories tall from so up there to there. So, if it's a six stories tall IMAX, isn't it still domed? No. Then why it's did fine. I drive all the way to Pennsylvania one time to see... Force Awakens in a dome that was like this, and I was a little mad about it. Uh, I have no idea. I went, I went to... It wasn't worth it. You yeah. were there. <laughs> we, we, Birmingham, Alabama. Yeah, I went to Birmingham, Alabama to see The Force Awakens in IMAX. Was it flat? No, it was domed like this. Then what, I where can I go to get a flat one? That's what I'm asking. Lincoln Square, I think. New Jersey. Jersey. New Jersey? Where in New Jersey? Uh, Northfield. Is it like the real IMAX where it's like the six stories tall, big flat one? Know how big it was, but it was labeled as IMAX, and I saw it, and it was amazing. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, the one in like Deer Park says IMAX, but it's like not really IMAX. I'm just gonna wait for Christopher Nolan's new movie because he, he shoots everything in real IMAX, and it, they only show it in like three theaters, and one of them's in New York. Thank you. I, yeah, all right. Has to be filmed. I don't think that's IMAX. like the Westbury is not like and that's the flat full six story floor. IMAX. Okay, that's yeah. the one I need. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. This is six stories high. Oh. I'm going to throw up looking up though. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there. Yeah. We'll get there. This is the Wolf Den. Long Island's number Don't one Don't forget, podcast. half of the channel is comic books. So yeah. Don't forget about that. You want to start something? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yes. Uh, we bought a bunch of stuff here We did. Yesterday. Um, so we, uh, we, we, we come here, we go to the, uh, what's it called? Too many games. Yes. Big fan of these conventions. Yes. Cause we buy a lot of retro yes. stuff. We're retro Much collectors. to my wife's chagrin, but <laughs> yeah, you got a lot of crap. I do. House. I'm allowed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm single. Um, I'm single everybody, please. <laughs> All right. What did, what did we get? Well, what do we get? Well, I have my list. Uh, I'll start from the top. I bought myself a wave bird for the GameCube mm -hmm. because I'm I'm on this like weird quest to like try any video game system I have I want wireless controllers for because they're just much more convenient they're easier to use I mean when they work probably they're easy to use and we never owned a WaveBird I'm the complete opposite I want everything wired because I'm right next to the monitor right. when I'm playing it yeah uh, I'm not <laughs> so yeah you're also on your like, nice little couch yeah in my basement situation my consoles are like here but my TV is there so it doesn't make yeah. sense for me mm. to have wired controllers. I will go, go, uh, down, your, go down my list. Go down okay. your list. Uh, I bought Sonic Triple Trouble for the Game Gear because that's like the only Sonic, one of the only Sonic games we don't have. Oh, right. For the Game Gear. Yeah. And that game is really fun. I've never. Uh, you played it? Yeah. And we don't have it? Yeah. Would you emulate it? No. No. Oh, okay. a, friend, a friend of mine had it growing up. Uh, a PS2 memory card because I needed a new one. A DualShock 2 because I needed a new one. That. And uh, it's white and apparently those are rare. Right, Tim? All right. <laughs> Please confirm my purchase. Yeah. Well, he's the one who told me that one's rare. I'm like, fine. I've you never know. seen it. I've yeah. never seen a white one. Uh, what else did I get? Uh, I bought Half-Life for the PS2, and I bought it because we did a backlog episode on the original Half-Life. Yes. But I, since then, I don't have a way to play it. It's like I don't have it on my PC. Original Half-Life is the first game to have WASD as default yes on the control so i bought it for a system where you use your controller <laughs> um but the ps2 version has an exclusive uh, co-op mo mode called uh, day of decay it's only in that version of half-life mm -hmm. so i think that's interesting uh as my screen goes dark as your screen goes dark i got a bunch of game manuals for some reason <laughs> i wasn't expecting to leave here with game manuals and i did anyway i got super mario bros 3 for the nes these are all nes games super yeah. mario bros 3 uh the super mario and duck hunt split 
and the Duck Hunt Mario track meet split. Yeah. I got the manuals for all those. Yeah. It's, it always fascinates me, the manual collecting scene. Because you don't think, oh, I'm going to spend $30 on a manual. Yeah. <laughs> or something you can look up online. What? I have that manual. You have? The, <laughs> I have the Duck Hunt Mario manual. That must be a different game. Unless I just bought it twice. You might have bought it twice. I probably bought it twice. You bought like... Damn it! You bought like, not to skip ahead, but you bought two copies of Super Mario Brothers Deluxe. All right, so I bought two copies of Super Mario Brothers Deluxe because you can play it with a link cable. Yeah. And uh, it has, it's like a versus mode yeah. that has the on off switch yeah. that they have in Mario Maker. Right. It was in Mario World. But Mario today, Deluxe. before we left, you said, I think I bought this already. Yeah, I might have it. That might be the third. So copy now we have three copies of that. Mm. So, I got to look. Yeah. I got to look now. All right. My turn again? Yeah, it's your turn. Okay. Um, I bought a copy of Assassin's Creed 2 for the PS3. I bought it because it was $2 and I just needed the case. Because I had another game where the case was broken. Do you and have it with you? No. Oh, I should have given it to somebody. I know. I was thinking, because the, the game, it, it had everything. The game, the manual, the label, and it's all like really good condition. So oh, I felt really bad. that's really unfortunate. <laughs> I felt bad. You're going to capitalize but, it. But... There's, I've just found a booth over there in mm. the corner selling PS2 game, PS3 games for $1, and they're all mm. sports games I don't care about. So maybe I'll just buy one of those and like swap it in. This way I have a nice copy of Assassin's Creed 3, uh-huh. the Best Buy edition. Really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I got Power Stone 1, a Japanese version for the Dreamcast, because Power Stone 2 is one of the best games for the Dreamcast. Yes. Um, it's like Smash. If you never played it, it's like a 3D Smash Brothers. Yeah, it's, it's awesome, insane. It's yeah. incredible. There's, there's like it's a fighting game where there's items. You yeah. can go up to four players. There's, you can have teams. There's uh, special moves before Smash Brothers had Smash Balls. Yeah. So, uh, yes, it is an amazing <laughs> game. I've never played the first one. I don't think. Don't we? Do we have the first one or the second one? We have the second one. Okay. Welcome to the Power. Welcome Stone to World. the Power Stone World Tournament. Yeah, that's the second one. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. What else you got? All right, I got. Uh, I bought the box for Sonic 2 because my wife, uh, who had a Sega Genesis growing up, and we still have it, uh, her Sonic doesn't have the box anymore. So I bought my wife the box for Sonic 2. You're such a good husband. I am a very good husband. <laughs> Didn't have the manual, though, so I'm still looking for that. So I, I slept on the couch last night. <laughs> I got bad dudes for the NES because I had to. Yeah. It was, you know, it was like six bucks. And it's a... It's a classic you game. Gotta I don't get, care what anyone see bad says. Dudes, you gotta get yeah. bad dudes. Uh, I got uh, Game Genie for the Game Gear. Because you pointed it out and I thought it looked yeah. awesome. It's ridiculous. It's huge. It's, like, it's this big. For Yeah. And the manual like is inside big. of it. There's like a little compartment. The manual is the size of a GBA cartridge. Yeah, it's yeah. weird. <laughs> it's super weird. Uh, I got Mario Hoops for the DS because it was really cheap. Um, I got... Wario Land for the Game Boy. What is that? Super Mario Land 3. Three. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I got just a PS2 case. Because I have a copy of Mega Man X8 that does not have a case. So yeah. I needed a PS2 case. And then I also got Soul Calibur, Crazy Taxi, and Ready to Rumble for the Dreamcast. Because I realized there's, I have like a lot of Dreamcast. We have a lot of Dreamcast games that like are missing. Mm. Like We didn't have Crazy Taxi beforehand. We didn't have Ready to Rumble. We didn't have Soul Calibur. Those are like some of the most memorable games from the Choo Choo Rocket. We don't have Choo Choo Rocket. Mm. And there's just a couple of others, like Hydro Thunder, which is like a big game that oh, yeah, came out. And I'm on the quest for NHL 2K2 because that's the last official, officially released Dreamcast game. Mm. And I just okay. think it's important to have that. And then, what else did I get? I bought Metal Gear Solid Ghost Babble for the Game Boy Color. Now, if you've seen our show, you know that we hype this game up it's, uh, all the time because it's great. It's like the the lost great Metal Gear game that nobody really knows about, but everybody should play. And it's the top rated Game Boy Color game on game rankings. Yes. We lost our copy. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where it went. <laughs> um, so we saw it here. It's also very rare. Yes. It's a very rare Game Boy game. And I, I'm, not, I'm not proud of the amount of money I spent on a Game Boy Color game, but I bought it. I think Greg took ours. <laughs> yeah, if you did. <laughs> I would remember stealing yeah, from Yeah, but me. now we definitely have it. And I today I bought a little stand to put it on, so I always know where it is. 
and it will be prominent, prominently be displayed in my house. I like that because it covers the contacts. Yes. It's like a little 3D printed thing some guy has in like, yes, the corner. Yes, uh, in the corner. By, by the, um, the soda steins. Yeah. Yeah, they, yeah, they yeah. had the wood panel uh, controller like holders. Yeah. Which is awesome because it's so hard to display. Like, to, where do you put controllers? Yeah. Like for me, they're just all over my desk. I, like, I have like the charging blocks for like my PS4 controllers. And then some company makes like really good um, officially licensed Microsoft controllers for the Xbox One. And they're like $10 on Amazon. But like Nintendo doesn't really have one. Um, and like for some of the older systems, it's like hard to find good displays for. I was trying to read what the company is. I, but say, I, I, had I, a, I, I saved this card from yesterday. I cannot read it. Um, All right. Yeah, what else? I want to get the Super Mario Brothers 3 for the NES that has... The, what do we have? Oh, yeah. So I learned this the other day. Uh, Super Mario Brothers 3 for the NES. You all familiar? Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so apparently the first printing of that game, the brothers, the word bros, is on the other side of the box and it covers his hand a little bit. Whereas later printings have it towards the end of the word uh, Mario, like next to the three. Out. Yeah. <laughs> so if you, ha if you have it where like Brothers is close to his hand, that's like a first printing. And recently that sold complete in box for $9,000. Damn. Yeah. Super Mario 3. <laughs> so I want to get the, what do we have? We I have get the one that we don't. We have uh, later printing. Okay, so I gotta get the one where it's it's uh, on the brothers left is, side. Yeah, close to the hand is covering it. If you're looking at it, it's on the left side. Do it for them. So that they if you're looking at it, it's on <laughs> this side. All right. And there was a booth that had it. Yeah. Uh, but we gotta do it once we get out of so here. So now, so after that, we'll have three copies of Super Mario Brothers three. Three. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because we already have advanced. one, and then you bought one yesterday. No, I bought the manual. Oh, you bought the manual yesterday. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And yeah, we had to have, have a Game Boy Advance, Advance one. Yeah. yeah. That we have complete in box sealed. Yes. I bought a 15 because I saw it on Amazon for like 130 <laughs> mm. All right. Well, that's all I got. All right. I got three more. I bought uh, the Matrix Path, Path of Neo because that's a game. It's the Matrix trilogy told from the point of view of Neo, you know, the game they should have released originally. Um, but Enter the, the Matrix was good. Enter the Matrix was it's got a lot of craft for fine. no reason. It's a good game. <laughs> I liked it. It's, it doesn't hold up very well. But Path I mean, of, of course not. Path of Neo is interesting because it's, it's the, the story of the games, the story of the movies from Neo's perspective. But then they add in all these like extra levels and side missions, like basically expanded universe stuff, including like in between the first and second movies, like all of his training. And they're all based on like famous movies. Like um, when they're teaching him how to like shoot, you have you recreate the, uh, the tea house scene from John Woo's Hard Boiled. Oh. Yeah. And if you've ever seen Hard Boiled... You know how great that scene is. Is that the one with the final boss at the end where all the, the ages go together? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, it's all like Megazord. Well. Yes. No, oh, that's another thing too. Um, they changed the ending of uh, Matrix Revolutions because it didn't make sense for a game. So the Wachowskis actually show up in the game, like stop the game dead in the tracks and goes, hey, we're the Wachowskis. We changed the ending of our own movie. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I also bought uh, Red Dead Revolver for the PS2 because we did not own that. Mm. And I feel like we should because we love those games. Yes. And then... I'm surprised we don't own that. No, I think, like, because it's weird. It's not, like, an open-world game. It's not... Yeah, but I thought I would have, like, brought it home I know. from GameStop, yeah. you know? When I would steal, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes right. they would just penny out games. Yeah. You know? And then, lastly, I bought this. So, this is... Uh, let me just pull up the Japanese name. <laughs> so this is a this is a um, reproduction of a game that only came out on the Super Famicom in Japan. Um, and I played this many years ago at a friend's house. He busted out a Super Famicom, and of course it's all in Japanese, so I have no idea what's going on in it. But all I knew was it was the characters from River City Ransom, and they start off in prison, and they're all just sitting on the floor talking in Japanese, and it's like a 30 minute cutscene, and I'm like, wait, this is a beat em up, and it's got like RPG style cutscenes in this, and like it's like they didn't even leave the prison yet, and already everything's a epic. What is going on here? I find out it's part of the River City Ransom series. It is, uh, you read that, you took that. 
Shin Neketsu Koha Kunio Tachi no Banka. Which roughly translates to the new hot-blooded tough guy, the eulogy of Kunio and Co. Oh. Yes. Well, all right then. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so now I have a way to play this on a good old American Super Nintendo. And I'm really excited because now I get to figure out what the hell is going on. So is it like an actual RPG? It's like a RPG beat-em-up. Okay. Yeah, because they the they've been taking the River City license and been doing like weird RPG yeah. stuff with it lately. Yeah. Well, River City Ransom like on the NES was kind of RPG ish in a way, but like this was like the next level. There was like elements of like you know like upgrades and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, you know. Yeah. This is like some next level stuff. Okay. So I'm really excited because it just looked bonkers. They they sat weirdly like they didn't sit like on the floor they like squatted. Yeah. Like that alone was like what is this. <laughs> Is that everything we got? Um, well, one more thing. Cause, so we got we to gotta talk to these people. We gotta do a, you know. Yeah, this, this will be quick. So after this panel, I want everyone in here to go. It's basically behind the dome uh, to this artist, Joe Hogan. He's a good friend of ours, and he hooked me up with this really awesome Sonic poster and this really awesome Alien poster, but it's Yoshi. <laughs> what does it say? It says, in space, no one can hear baby Mario scream. That was very good. So I want everybody <laughs> at, in here, when they're done, to go to, his, go to his booth, buy something, or if you can't afford it, just be like, hey, the Wolf Den sent me over here. You're rad. And then leave. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So that's, all, that's what we got. Yes. We got a lot. Of, we got too much stuff. We did get too much stuff. You, would, you could say we got too many games, but that's not this convention. That's a different convention. No, this is Please. the Long Island Retro Gaming Expo in Garden City, Long Island! <laughs> <laughs> Every time. <laughs> All right. We can, uh, yes, talk to you people. Open the floor up to some questions. If anybody's got questions, just raise your hand and shout at yeah. us. Yeah. Right there. Did you see me? Did you see the uh, Super Mario Brothers 2 thing upstairs? Ooh, what are you talking about? Oh, yeah. I showed it you yesterday. But how they had Mario Brothers and then they had Doki Doki Panic? Yes. And then you made a big stink about yes, it? Yes, I did. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. I made a big stink about it because first I saw Mario 2, right. and I thought, oh, that would be funny if I did that. And then right next to it, apparently, was Doki Doki. Today, Panic. they had uh, The Legend of Zelda yes. instead of Doki Doki. Panic. Yes. But Which I don't know if you knew this, Will. <laughs> the original Super Mario Bros. was originally a game called River City. No, Doki Doki. <laughs> they still have the sign up, though. There's a sign that like explains it. Oh, people don't know. I need, to, I need to brush up on that. Yeah. All right. Anyone else? Yeah. Yes, hello. Yes. I want to know how you, as collectors, how do you feel about people that collect things just because they have, they, they want things that they know that the developers don't want them to have. Let's say, like, uh, like uh. for example, out, out on the sales floor, somebody has a PlayStation 2 dev box. Yes. Oh, yes. Or maybe somebody wants... Um, like, I'll use myself for, as an example. Um, I have a particular, as much as I don't like to admit it, I have a particular hatred for Square Enix. <laughs> so what happens is, many years ago I found somebody had leaked a, a manual for Final Fantasy XI that was never intended to be seen by the public. And it was only meant for employees of Square Enix, it was an in-house only document. Right. And because of my very distinct hatred of Square Enix, <laughs> I'm very glad that I have it. Right. You know, I, I, I apologize for how that sounds. No, it's fine. I don't think yeah. there's anything wrong no. with uh, collecting things that are, uh, like, uh, Supposed to be used internally yeah, for like secret things and things like that. Especially like if it's you know like ten or so years afterwards. I think you know. I, I think there's something wrong with like uh, taking an unfinished game and publishing it online because that's just straight up piracy. Yeah. Unless the company is absolved. Yeah. You know? Like they're out of business. That's one or dissolved. Thing. Whatever. Uh, yeah. Uh, but that because that's just straight up stealing. But if if you're getting something from an employee that worked there or something like I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Like yeah. there's. Uh, uh, what's it called? There, there's Tim's. Oh, place. the the one video game trading. Yeah, post. the same the same they, the same place that the PS2 dev kit has uh prototype games for the GameCube from Acclaim. Yeah. Who were stationed on Long Island who don't exist anymore. Yeah, and so I want those. <laughs> so like I don't think there's anything wrong yeah. with uh, 
taking something that or buying something that a company might not necessarily want you to have as long as it's legal. Yeah, you know, I mean, because ultimately it is a part of the history of the culture. Yeah, exactly. So you know, if you're preserving it and you're, you know, I think it's important for gaming history too, like the yeah. the, the Sony Nintendo like console. Oh yeah, the know? the Nintendo PlayStation. Yeah. 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 yeah no no problem. problem. Thank you for your yeah. question. Yes. Yes. Um, a few weeks ago, somehow in the UK, the government ruled because um, EA is trying to pr pretty much prove that loot boxes are not gambling. They are. They're surprising <laughs> mechanics. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much the UK ruled that uh, something along the lines of that they sided with EA essentially. It went, I'm frankly surprised at that when you have uh, over in the EU, Belgium, and the Netherlands who have outlawed loot boxes. Yeah. Period. I mean, I've. Look, I'm a FIFA. I play FIFA. I kind of had a falling out last year, just just pure disillusion. It's it's pretty much like it is gambling to me. I mean, just in all attempts to get. I mean, in Britain, I believe it was a bunch of kids empty out their entire parents' bank account in hopes of getting uh, packing Lionel Messi. Spoiler yeah. Alert, yeah. They didn't. <laughs> I mean, what's your and so, what well, like? What's your opinion on? I think yeah. Most of the time, it's 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 gambling. Uh, yeah. it, it's gambling if you could resell the item, like in the case of CS:GO, like those loot boxes. You can take those skins and stuff and resell them on a marketplace, and then it's, that's just money. That's just money that you're getting. So that is yeah. straight up gambling. Um, I think if it's cosmetic items, like in the case of Overwatch, where uh, like those things. You, you can't necessarily resell them uh, and they don't really have any like in-game value at all. I don't think there's something there's anything wrong with that specifically. Um, but that's not the case with a lot of games. Yeah. I think that the big problem is the surprise the surprise mechanic of it basically because if you know you say oh if you spend two dollars you could get you could get this but then you spend two dollars and you don't get it so you're gonna keep spending two dollars until you do. Three hundred dollars later, you never get it. Like that's a problem. I think any game with loot boxes on it needs to have some sort of additional rating or something, like a warning label, basically yeah. saying like contain contains microtransactions and loot boxes. Yeah. yeah, like they already have that in the app store, right? Yeah, contains contains in app purchases. Yeah. So they need to have that on video games so that if yeah. you buy a game for your kid, they're not running through your credit card. You know? Yeah, I think. I think it's good here that, like, last week, Nintendo, Microsoft, and Sony came together and said, look, we're, yeah, we're, like, we're going to do something about that. I think it, it's good that, like, here, like, the game industry themselves realizes it's a problem, and they're going to, like, work to address it and, like, make it easier for people to know that, like, these games have that. That's the best thing the ESA has done in a long time, Will. Yes, it is, Bob. <laughs> wait, um, um, to rebel on that, what do you think about Activision putting, like, blue boxes after reviews or something like that? That's BS. Yeah, that's <laughs> messed up. That's that's yeah. straight. That's straight messed up. Well, because, re uh, review sites uh, need to have like uh, flowing reviews that change over time. Like when when there's new updates, right? Because games are changing constantly, right? And but they, they always they'll sometimes update the reviews. Like in the case of like some like No Man's Sky, right? They'll go back and update it, and they need to do that when there's stuff like but I feel like that ruin the there, game. There's something pretty scummy about like. Uh, they, everybody releases their reviews. They give it like this score, and then two weeks later the game comes out, and then they add the micro. Yeah, that's messed yeah. up, and that's why they so, sh these review sites need yeah. to come back and be like, all right, we're taking it back. Yeah, this game sucks. And now, then they need know? to make it clear that like this game is going to have microtransactions at some point. Yeah, that's important too. Yeah, yeah they need to because people are pre-ordering it, which don't pre-order games, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then they're gonna get slapped with microtransactions. Yeah. They don't know that. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh, oh, you got it. Yeah. Sorry. There's a, there's a bot on Twitch. Every hour, it goes, uh, "Stay hydrated, bot. You have been streaming for one hour. You need exactly four <laughs> ounces of water." And I'm like, "Oh God, it's here." <laughs> All right. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So two things. I, I actually visited your friend uh, Joe Hogan. Right? Yes. Yes. And I uh, got a I got a drawing of Animal Crossing, but in the artwork of Grand Theft Auto. Oh, oh that's yeah, awesome. that's a good one. <laughs> that's a really good one. Yeah. Yeah. So something, uh, something heavy, right? With the whole violence in video games things. Uh, I want to hear your guys' thoughts, right? Given the chance, if you were in front of government officials and they were actually going to listen to you yeah, and yeah. take in your feedback, 
how would you argue the case, right, that uh, video games do not cause violence? I would say whatever you want to do to video games to regulate them, you have to do to movies, TV, TV and books, music, and books, television, because there's no difference. There really isn't. Like, if I'm playing Pac-Man, I don't feel like I'm eating pellets, you know? <laughs> when I'm playing a shooter, I don't feel like I'm holding yeah. a gun shooting people, you know? It's not the yeah, same. Yeah, it's not, you know? And I just think it's, it's ridiculous that it is... However many years since Night Trap and Mortal Kombat, and we're still having this talk because, God forbid, somebody, like, have, like, the serious discussion that, like, you know, gun access to guns is too easy. Um, this country's mental health um, system is just appalling. Um, and just this, there are other messages out there from people in high-seated positions that just don't jive very well it's, with normal human discord old people think that video games are for kids yes and unfortunately we have a lot of old people running the country yes <laughs> so th they need to understand that there is first of all the average age of a gamer is 35 so i am below average yeah because that yeah <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah and I forgot where I was going with that. Yeah, no. The, the, <laughs> I think I think we get the point. It's just um, we just need to wait for. Oh, all the and there's freaking ratings on games. Yes, already. Yeah. So just don't buy your kid in a fact, game that's not for them. In fact, like it's. Yes. Yes. Let's the, regulate the parents. Yeah, exactly. If if you're gonna if you're gonna have a kid, you should get a license. You uh, should. Requ it should require a license to get a kid. Yeah. There's a lot of dumb people having kids. Out yeah. There. And having a lot. Yeah. The dumb ones have the most. Yes. <laughs> uh, and they stop caring. Like, yeah. buy whatever you want. Yeah. Yes. Yes. The likelihood of... What do you guys think the likelihood of Gene Simmons doing the Pokemon company is? Uh, he, yeah, he said he, he put out a statement so, saying he was okay with it. You said that he's definitely going to sue. I said there's a high chance. When, it, when, it, yeah. when you saw the Pokemon. Yeah, You're like, the, Gene Simmons is going to sue Yeah, because he loves money. But then he came out and said... That, well, it was a weird tweet. First he said, whelp. Yeah, and that whelp said, I'm yeah. going to sue the but, crap but then, out of like, the Pokemon company. Some, like, I forgot what newspaper like, interviewed him about it. And he said, like, listen, my kids grew up playing this game. I think it's if they want to honor kissing it, I think that's great. And then I realized, if, I realized if there's one thing Gene Simmons loves as much as money, it's publicity. Publicity. <laughs> So that tweet that he sent out said it was weird. It was it was, it was like a weird. quote tweet, and it was like Gene Simmons approves the the. He didn't technically approve. Yeah, yeah. no, but his own Twitter account yeah. was talking in like third person. It was yeah. weird. Um, but what I think happened was he went to his lawyers and was like, "Hey, I want to sue," and yeah. they were like, "You can't sue them. They're too big." <laughs> yeah, it's not so it was work. probably like, "All right, well, if this gets people too talking big, about and they definitely don't care about you. Yeah. <laughs> if this gets people talking about Kiss, then I don't care. Yeah, so. Yeah. He, he probably wanted to, yeah, and then just couldn't. Fortune and glory—that's that's what he runs yeah. on. Yeah. Yes. Up there. Yeah. Yes. You raise your hand. <laughs> Good question. Um, what? What? Um, I see you guys are big Sonic fans. Like, um, what? What you guys? What got you guys into the game series? And any uh, we had a Genesis growing up. We we started with an NES. Yeah. And then I think we saw a commercial for Sonic, and yeah, we're just like, too rad. Yeah, he was so rad. Just couldn't take or it. Or just like that. We need that in our life. We're like, well, I don't want to be a little bitch and get yeah, Super no. Nintendo. You gotta go fast. It had blast processing in 16 <laughs> bits. So yeah, we got a we our parents got us a Sega Genesis yes. um with Sonic 2. Mm -hmm. And then uh we got Sonic 3 somehow. Yeah. And it's just it's been a slow burn ever since. Yeah. I mean with the highest of highs and the <laughs> lowest of lows. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yeah, there's, uh, there's a, there's, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of Sonic. There, most of the games now are pretty terrible. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the, the design of the movie is trash. I don't know what you want. <laughs> yeah, we'll see how that looks. I will say they, they got Tyson Hesse, the guy who worked on yeah. Mania, and the, the little shorts that they've been making. Yeah. Those uh, are excellent. He's he's working with them to redesign yeah. it, but I don't know how much they're gonna listen to him. I will say, um, I don't know if you guys saw the OKKO OK uh, cartoon with not. Sonic on it. That was awesome. 
Yeah, the show got canceled, but the yeah, uh, like two weeks after the Sonic episode that came out, sucks. It's like yeah, didn't finish out the series, but yeah, it was, this is it. <laughs> that was. Yeah. I I just saw the stuff on Twitter. Yeah, and it looked. Really it was good. really good. Yeah. Where can I see it? Uh, without having to turn on a TV. Yeah. Hulu. Yeah. Try that. Yes. Okay. I'll check that out. I, wa- I, yeah, I watch the Adult Swim stuff, like the anime stuff. Yeah. All right. Uh, right in front. Mm-hmm. So uh, that prize is only going to get bigger. Yeah. We have a lot of talks about this with our father, who doesn't understand anything. Yeah. He just sees that. And he he's just like, how do you, game. How, look at that. The, the, the Fortnite. You got to get into this e fort. Yeah. Thing. Hit send them your tapes. <laughs> uh so I I'm not big into esports because most of the games that they play I'm not very interested in. I'm very big into Smash Brothers esports, which is unfortunate because uh Nintendo isn't big into Smash yeah. Brothers esports. And the only reason why Fortnite had such a big pot is because they have Epic behind them yeah. and it's really popular you know and they had twitch behind them and everything and something like smash Bros. doesn't have anything behind it yeah i think absolutely our future is going to be these big esports competitions these big games all over the place they already are like yeah. uh league of legends was selling out uh, madison square garden yeah like uh it's a big deal my yeah espn shows some gaming yeah. stuff already they show csgo tournaments yeah. and stuff yeah like on the tv i am it, they did just back out of like apex legends yeah. what yeah. happened they put they were playing apex legends on what was it like cbs yeah or something yeah so they're like so espn's like oh they're right let's show football players who beat their wives instead um fortnite's rated t though yeah so. Um, my only concern with esports is that they they pump a lot of money into everything, like production, the prizes, and things like that. It's got to burst at some point. Like they're gonna, people would say that about gaming too. I know, but I feel like was gaming is its own thing, and then esports gaming is just like an entertainment industry. Like, yeah, but I'm like, saying just because people pump money into it doesn't mean it's gonna necessarily burst anything. Right, soon. but like, where is all this money coming from? One, two, like at a certain point, like there's gonna be a drop off. And well, like, how severe is the drop off going to he, be? Here's what I think. I think that it's it's like it's like the cannabis industry. It was like, oh, yeah. weed's legal now. Let's just throw all of our money into it, and then we'll make a lot of money. Mm-hmm. People are like, oh, esports. Just take my money, do something with it, and make me yeah. money back. Like, there's that HyperX esports arena that we went to in L.A., Las Vegas. Thank you, <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, and it what it, it looked like they just took a bunch of money, threw it into a place. It was very nice. But there was no structure. It was very. It. it I thought a re, I thought it would be more like this. It is literally a bar with a stage. I thought it was a little cooler than that. It was a bar with a stage and a couple of like computers. But set it was up. just so that like the Luxor could be like a Lux Luxor. Luxor. Yeah. Luxor is that a TV company? Lexmark is a printer company. Lux. L- Luxor. <laughs> it's just so that the Luxor could be like we have an esports arena. That's the only reason why. Yeah. They did it. So. Uh, I think that it's just gonna get bigger. The esports, it'll get bigger and it'll get better. But I just, I'm afraid that like it's they're gonna reach a point where it, like it yeah. just expo- implodes on itself. So like that one kid won three million dollars in right. the Fortnite competition. But don't forget, the top like ten people won money too. Oh yeah, like he just won the most. Yeah, but everybody else, people were getting nine hundred thousand yeah. dollar handouts like yeah. for being in the top five or yeah. whatever. So. uh it was yeah that was a very big deal yeah. but it, yeah it's just hopefully there's other games that I'm more interested in that yeah. <laughs> in the in the esports situation yeah. yes yeah so uh concerning uh youtube and your youtube growth and your success right if you could give some like quick tips or lessons that you learned uh in the past 6 years right what are some like top 3 to 5 tips of growing a youtube channel growing your brand that you could give to like new people going into the channels my biggest advice would be to Pay really close attention to what works and uh, be able to lean into it and always constantly change what you're doing. Like, don't do the same thing 
for years and expect something. I mean, you can stick to your guns on some parts, like we. Yeah. We pretty much do. Well, well, no, we we have the same show structure on the right. channel, which is very stubborn of us because YouTube yeah. doesn't like it very much when we have like different shows on one channel. Um, that's something we stuck to our guns with, but uh, you know, uh, like I used to cover all different types of games, and and uh, I used when we first started, I used to read all of the games that were coming out that week. Yeah, you know, and then I was like, that's really boring, so I cut that out. Um, some videos were doing better than others, so I leaned into the ones that were doing good. Also, uh, if you have people writing in your comments like, "Oh, I love this," make more stuff like this. Don't listen to them. <laughs> make sure that the view count acts. I don't want to say the view count is everything because it's not. But it's a lot of it. But it's a lot. Like, yeah. just because people say that they like something doesn't mean that all of your subscribers are going to watch it. Yeah. You know, like people love our backlog series, but. And everybody always has good things to say about yeah. it. But YouTube does not like it. And it gets the lowest view count on our channel when we post a backlog episode. Everybody loves it. Everybody talks about how much they want more of it. But it barely gets any views. Yeah. So we just, we can't. And having videos that have a lot of views and then videos that don't get a lot of views hurts the channel. So that's just the YouTube game. You got to play the YouTube game. Yeah. You, know? you got to be able to adapt and, you know, have that work for you. Change the 9-volt battery out of your freaking smoke <laughs> detector, too. I don't know what the hell it is with these freaking YouTubers yeah. out there. With smoke detectors going off in their YouTube videos. Yeah. I was watching one today, and the, you can hear the guy's email alert while he was talking. And it was like, Dude, oh, just mute your phone, I know. man. You're doing a video. I know. Patrick Willems. <laughs> was it actually him? It was actually oh him, yeah. I was very disappointed. <laughs> I guess uh, to follow up with that, what you said that like you change up uh, your your audience likes it, but YouTube doesn't. Mm -hmm. How do you explain to your audience that like, listen, I know you like it, but YouTube doesn't. But in a way, to not lose your. That's the beauty of it. You don't have to because yeah. they won't even notice. <laughs> like, uh, let's say you get a hundred people. Let's say you get twenty people in your comments that are like, "This is a really good. I like what you're doing here. It's great." But that video only gets a hundred views. Then you make another video. That gets a thousand views. Those hundred people don't compare, you know? Right. Like, it's unfortunate, but that's just how mm. growth works on YouTube, you know? And it doesn't mean that you don't, it doesn't mean stop doing that completely. If you like doing that stuff, then keep doing it. Like, we do plenty of stuff that doesn't get views just because we like it. My stuff. His stuff. <laughs> that's why he's around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know you, I know you guys do, but... Yeah. Yeah. Like I live stream and for a really long time I was live streaming to nobody when my videos were doing pretty good, you know, but I just liked to play games and talk to the people who watch my videos. So um, getting, having stuff that doesn't get a lot of views isn't necessarily bad if you enjoy doing it, you know? Mm -hmm. So you got to weigh like, is this worth my growth versus like, do I like doing it? You know? So yeah. That, too. that works too. That's another yeah. good advice. Second channel for garbage. <laughs> um, or third. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what? What? Uh, you have a podcast, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. About a year now. Games and Groceries podcast. Games. Everybody subscribe to them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just took uh, YouTube pretty seriously in like the past three weeks. Yeah. 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 But, yeah. Like I just saw like growth going there. I'm like. Were you on other like podcast services before that, or did you start on YouTube? I started on podcasting, so like we were doing iTunes, Spotify, right, right. and uh, I was doing some research of like, yeah, podcast growth is good, but not like on YouTube. So if yeah. you really want to get your name out there, we really like doing the podcast. I'm like, listen, we gotta take YouTube seriously now. So, um, but yeah, I'm starting to see like, uh, like I'm starting a VidIQ. Mm -hmm. uh, so like just yeah, VidIQ yeah. for people who don't know uh, is like a, it's like a it's like a oh okay. I, I only know it as the uh, like, like the Chrome app. extension. Yeah, yeah, that's really helpful because like when you go in to like upload your video, it, like it'll show you like what yeah what other people are doing. It'll also give you a character count for your tags, which I need because I always go over. Yeah, I don't know why YouTube doesn't give you a character because yeah. you can't have a certain amount of tags. Five hundred characters in your ta tags, um, and it tells you what tag like after you post your video, it'll tell you how you rank in certain tags, which is really 
Yeah. Really cool. Yeah, I see some of your tags, and you like always like rank up there. I I always try to make as many tags as possible. Yeah. It also helps to if you want to rank in the tags, um, repeat whatever is in the title of the video in the tags. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a follow-up question to what yeah, he's sure. asking? Um, as like being on YouTube, do you feel that there's a certain goal for you and your genre versus somebody else in their genre? No. So is it like subscribers or is it like views? Both. So, no, I don't. I I don't care about the number as much as a lot of other people in the same field. Uh, because you can have a lot of subscribers and barely any views. And I know a lot of people yeah. who that happened to. Um, uh, and some of our videos don't get a lot of views compared to the amount of subscribers yeah. we have. And subscribers doesn't equal money. Views kind of does because of the, uh, cause of the ad revenue and whatnot. Yeah. Um, I, I reach for a certain amount of views in my own videos. Like uh, when I post a Tuesday gameplay video, like I... I know, okay, this gets this many views, then that was a good video. If it gets below this, then it yeah. was a trash video. Um, but in the long run, I'm not like trying to, I'm just trying to be good at my job. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's my goal is, is to just, uh, you know, I to just keep, ha keep having this yeah. job. I think the thing about subscriber count is it's a, it's a good and easy metric to like, tell people like just to give them an overview of like how successful your channel is to a point like if you I, if you well like if you i don't agree and i don't like that well <laughs> i'm not saying you have to like it i'm just saying like if you tell people like oh yeah i have like you know x amount of subscribers they're like oh that's impressive here's like, yeah. something that pisses me <laughs> off every youtuber that i have met that is close to where i'm at in subscriber count or above has mentioned their subscriber review count in some way in like the conversation and I'm like, oh, you're okay. Like I liked you before, and now, now yeah. you're one of those. I hate that because like everybody has had zero before. Yeah. Everybody started with zero. Everybody's got zero uh, views at one point. Yeah. Like so, it's just a grind. And I've yeah. been there. We've all yeah. been there. So like you don't know that like like you guys could have yeah. a million subscribers tomorrow. You know, like. So I think it's. I don't like people talking about view count like it like it's uh, like it represents somebody right or like, or like the well count yeah if you if you, use, if you do it in that way you're an asshole you should right. be on the platform but right. I'm saying like if you're you know just explaining it to some like I, I tell my coworkers like at my nine to five like yeah I'm on YouTube I have X my, amount of subscribers mom does that right mom my, our mom will be like oh yeah he's on YouTube he's got blah, blah, blah. I'm like mom come on you're embarrassing me <laughs> well when she's out with her sewing circle how, how else is she gonna explain this to people. <laughs> Yeah, they just got like another thousand subscribers. It's really fascinating. I, I, just, I don't understand any of it. I just view this as a job. Yeah. And I just need to stay afloat in my job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, that's that's how I look at it. Yeah. So that I guess the, to answer your question, even though this is a very long answer, is uh, we don't have like a number goal or anything. We're just trying to survive yeah. <laughs> on YouTube, you know. <laughs> That was very yeah. I'm all sweaty now. Yeah. Yes. Thoughts on streaming services like bidding for people now and to help the platform. Look, any streaming service that wants to give us like a lot of money to move, like please, <laughs> you know, hard. All right. So, um, I'm on Twitch. Uh, I don't really like Twitch. I think a lot of the staff is kind of like they got big heads about themselves, and it's like a it's like a fraternity there. Um. Mixer, I, I don't know this like anything about Mixer to be completely honest. Like I, I, I don't know like who's even on it besides uh, a ninja. The only reason I'm on Twitch is because it's the biggest streaming platform. You yeah. know, Spawn Wave yeah. is just on everything. Like he's been on Twitch before too, and he he mostly streams on YouTube though. He's also on Drugs, probably. Yes. <laughs> you see those gains, man. He's got to be doing something. Um. But no, like, I, and I understand that. I think if you're, if if you're a, a social media person or like a content creator in any capacity, you should be on everything. You know, uh, I don't think if if you want to start streaming, uh, I think any of those platforms is a great place to go. You know, I don't think there's any real like 
cons to any of them, you know. Um, I think Ninja going over to Mixer was a great choice for him, especially where he's at in his career because he's already, like, on top. And yeah. he can only go down from here. So uh, Microsoft's probably like, we need people to go to our channel. Yeah. Uh, let's dump all this money into uh, uh, Ninja. Ninja. And uh, it's going to be worth it for them because uh, he's going to bring a lot of people. He, his viewership in the long run is going to go down, but marginally. Yeah. Like not a lot. Yeah. And it, what does it matter to him? Yeah. He was already yeah, the biggest yeah. streamer before. Yeah. He's still going to be really big. So. I think he collects six figures now just from stock dividends alone. Yeah. He, yeah, he was making yeah, at least six figures a month. No, I think he's making like over a million a month. He, he, yeah, at this point. But he, you know, you never know. Everybody just I mean, makes dis- up numbers. Discord is starting their own streaming service because, oh, he can go to that Are and they? still be fine. Yeah. Yeah, the Discord. I did not know that. Yeah. They should not do that. They really shouldn't. It's <laughs> only for like 10 people. Like, you can only go live for like 10 people. Oh, okay. Oh, so like, it, is it built into their into the app oh if you're a nitro subscriber okay yeah but that's 10 more people than you could get on youtube that's That's true true i need a good way so that when i'm streaming a game i can have people who i'm in a call with watching the game latency free like through but i don't play games on the pc i play them on like console so like running i would have to run like two elgatos three yeah that won't work very well can't you do that through the Discord? Call them? Yeah, and it's laggy and like, like, kind of crappy. Yeah, I do it with uh, so Discord kind of like chops out, especially if you have people who are on different platforms. So if you have like somebody on Windows and somebody on Mac and somebody like on their phone, uh, it'll get weird and like choppy. Uh, so we mostly use Google Hangouts. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but that has a screen share option. But it, yeah. I usually screen share the OBS window, but that gets like a little choppy. But it's real time so they don't have to wait for the stream to catch up you know yeah anybody else got a question is there like any difference like you mentioned like um like the ca- like capture cards and whatnot because i stream once i mean, just out of curiosity through the twitch app on xbox is there any difference between using just like a native app on the console versus like all the equipment you have to go out and buy so i think you get better quality when you upgrade your stream to like get all this fancy stuff but i think that it's the return isn't as big as a lot of people think like i think that if you want to stream do what use whatever you currently have available like you don't and it it goes the same for youtube if you want to start a youtube channel just use your phone you know use whatever you have because most of the time what people do is they use the equipment as like a barrier to entry they're like oh i want to stream but i don't have an elgato Oh, I want to stream, but my computer's not, not powerful enough. If you want to stream on console, just use the PS4. And there, I knew a lot of people who were doing really well on Twitch just streaming from the console. You know, so it's mostly about the content you're making and like your personality and like what you're putting out into it. Um, so, yeah, I'd say only upgrade. Like I'd say, if you want to start, just use what you have. And if you want to upgrade, uh, it's only gonna make your stream marginally better. <laughs> You know, I mean, I only got like one viewer in like for a half an hour. Just like you're out. Yeah, I yeah, I've been there. <laughs> it's it, and I like I've told my friends who uh, started streaming like you just you you're gonna stream to nobody for a long time, uh, but while you do that, you just have to constantly talk so that when somebody comes in, you might see that viewer go uh, number go from one to two, and then you'll capture their interest because you've already been talking, you know? Mm-hmm. So you need to learn how to, like, talk to yourself, which is which sucks, but yeah. <laughs> just how it is. Yes. Yeah. So following up on that, do you feel like people, when they're watching a channel, they're, like, on a Twitch stream or whatever, they want to see one game, this person play this game all the time? That's a big thing, though, like... Yes. Um, variety streaming isn't uh, very... It's like impossible to get into. Having a niche is, uh, really helps. Um, so yeah, I'd say you probably want to stick to a game. It's possible that the game, like I knew people who streamed Destiny and then Destiny like crapped out 
Destiny started to get a lower viewership, and then Destiny 2 came out, and it fizzled out really quick and had a steep drop-off. So all of those people switched to Fortnite. <laughs> so, like, yeah. Yeah. So, like, uh, yes, I'd say sticking to one game helps, definitely, but you need to also adapt. So you need to change with what's working for your channel, you know? And you'll be able to find out, like, if you're variety streaming, find out what game uh, you like and what your audience likes, and then lean into that. Yes. yes. Uh, two things. Um, you can get back to me because he's been having. Ha oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> What's up? Priority. I was no. just going to say, when it comes to that the streaming, as you were saying before, is the game the priority or the personality the priority? The personality. Yeah. That's Ready? another thing a lot of people don't realize while, when they're like starting out streaming. Uh, is uh, they'll think that they either need to be really good at the game or they'll be quiet while all this stuff's happening on screen, and people want to hear you they want to they're, they're coming to your channel for you you know if they want to play the game they'll just play the game so that's what i'd say and then i guess my second this is my first thing Thank um you. but yeah talking about your personality because um this is for both of you you would say that youtube is kind of like the exaggerated versions of yourself right i'd absolutely say yeah that. yeah and um so i guess how you say is like when you're first starting out how do you make an exaggerated version of yourself without crossing that line into being a fake personality? It's, it's a lot of acting, yeah. to be completely honest. I think when we started, like, we were more like, as we normally are, and then like, we just slowly evolved into like, learning how to be bigger and more exaggerated. I'd say I was shy. Like, if you go to yeah. like, the first videos on our channel, the, the, first of all, it's dark, because we, yeah, we, we, we didn't know lighting. Uh, and I talk, like, really quiet. Yeah. I talk like this. A lot of my early... Like, even, like, from, like, a two, three years ago, like, I was, like, talking lower. Like, I was, you know, slower a little bit. But now I'm, like, louder. And, like, I'm I can talk... Like, not too fast, but I talk faster. I also heard somewhere that, you know, how the camera makes you, like... What is it? Add 10 pounds? Yeah. They say that it takes away like 30 percent of your enthusiasm so yeah. you just need to add more enthusiasm to whatever you're saying yeah. you know just to yeah, yeah. well i shout him unless you <laughs> unless you're really pissed off about what you're talking about yeah so. yeah so are we missing people up there no okay right. you you <laughs> Yes. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> Your best self. Yes. You know. With variety streaming, um, like you were saying, that is that is more difficult. But that is definitely like one hundred percent like your personality. It's like I variety yeah, stream, and I switch from game to game. I'll get bored, and people don't come for the games at all. They don't give a crap. They mm -hmm. are purely there to like interact mm -hmm. with the streamer. Yeah. 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 That's and that's that's. The that's really difficult to get into, though, to get people to care more about you than the game that you're playing. You know, like, oh, I hate this game, but I just came here for you. You know, you yeah. know what I mean? Oh, okay. oh. <laughs> there's, oh. there's also that. Why don't you check your privilege then, huh? <laughs> Personality, too, and it's like, thanks for the compliment. Yeah, there's that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's a weird sort of, like, toxicity. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it, it is great to have people who are willing to come with you to play, to watch you play any game. Uh, but yeah, I, I'd say if you want to grow uh, from like nothing, it's easier to uh, to have like a niche. Um, I know that like I've I sometimes I'll veer off of Mario Maker and play something else, um, but then the viewer count dips. You know, you can see it dip. And like, but I just want to play another game, you know? <laughs> so like, I have some people that are willing to watch whatever I play, but yeah. then, you know, uh, not everybody. It's just, just how it is. Also, I don't stream to like, you know, make a lot of money. I stream because I just want to talk to people and play video games. Yeah. I don't play video games anymore unless I sit down and <laughs> force myself to. Yeah. So. Anybody else got any questions for us? Questions, comments, concerns. Oh, all the way up there. I knew I was yeah. missing somebody. Sorry. Do you believe that it would be like something very similar to Wii Sports under Nintendo Switch? No. <laughs> and I'm pissed about it. I thought one two uh, switch yeah. should have been the Wii Sports. It's yeah, but like nobody talks about it, nobody plays it. 
I mean, if it was a the packing game for the uh, Switch, I feel like it might be a different story. Yeah, it's because it was sixty dollars. Yeah, it should have been yeah. free with the Switch, but it wasn't. So, uh, yeah, it, yeah. it, it, sh- it should have been. It should have definitely been a packing. I mean, it, it was a cool game to yeah. like show up. Like the whole point of Wii Sports was to show off the motion controls, but they did it in a beautiful way. Yeah, and the whole point of One Two Switch was to show off uh, the Joy Cons. Yeah, and uh, it did an okay job. Switch, are you gonna make a video of the newer Switch model in the future? Not the one, not the. I'm gonna do the Switch Lite, absolutely. Uh, I decided not to do a video on the new revision that they kind of like quietly launched because the only difference is the battery life, and I thought that'd make a really boring, like seven minute long video. You know what I mean? <laughs> a lot of videos are like that. They just open, and it's like, oh, it's the same. There's a yeah. lot of people who make videos on, like, oh, wow, look at this new Joy Con color. Yeah. It's like, you can't see it at home what it looks like. Yeah. Just know that I know this is a really cool blue. Yeah. You know, like, I don't want to do that. I want to make a video that's interesting to people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. In terms, not so much streaming, but content creation, do you feel that there's a market for gaming and, like, legal ramifications of the law? Like, talking about licensing. Like, there was an issue with, like, remember how companies used to have warranty stickers mm-hmm. on their consoles yeah. and why... Uh, they said you can't do that anymore. Stuff like that. Do you feel there's a market for that without being too boring? What do you mean? Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't quite. Just like get talking it. about like because uh, there's been famous court cases between companies like uh, I forget who it was was it Atari and Nintendo. Mm-hmm. Was, oh yeah. About stuff like that or like. Uh, oh, like, like the where an, Atari broke the lockout chip and the Nintendo sued them. Yeah. So like doing a YouTube channel about that stuff. Let me guess. You're a lawyer. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> um. <laughs> Okay. Nice. And so My you're man. interested in that yeah. stuff. Um, I think absolutely there would be a market for that. Yeah, there is. There's already channels like that, like Gaming Historian is like the big one. Um, but if you want to dive deeper into the legal aspects of it, that's yeah something not a lot of people are doing. There's like a lot of IP law and patent law. So yeah. Sometimes they st- they just, like I noticed they only scratch the surface and they don't go. Like- yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, people would be super interested. Pretty Especially much- if you can make it interesting to people, like, because people are going to care. People who are like in... You're in like the law field are gonna and people who are in the law field and like video games are gonna care about that. But if you make it interesting enough, everybody will care about there it. There are YouTube you know? channels of teenage girls talking about what they bought at the mall. True. And they have like an obscene amount of subscribers. There is a market for everything on YouTube. So like going into like the legal history of like the important video game cases, I think, you know, it's a good idea. And if you wanna go a little bit deeper than like some of the stuff you've seen like on YouTube already, I, you know, there's definitely a market for it. Um, how big the market is and how you know quickly you'll penetrate that market, I don't know. But there'll definitely be people who will want to like know more about that stuff. But that's a good like niche to start in. Yeah. And then again, if you're interesting enough, you c- you can get a lot of other people interested in that too. Yeah. So, yeah, there's definitely something for that. I just yeah. realized we have like three minutes. All right. So we gotta plow through. Uh, back all the way up there again. A Super Mario Galaxy type game? Uh, kind of? No. I mean, in, in a sense that it's a big 3D Mario game, yes. Um, but at the same time, Galaxy was very big on like playing with gravity and like the levels being all spherical. Mm-hmm. And Mario Odyssey is much more like Mario 64. I think Mario Odyssey is the, uh, is, is the next step after Galaxy. Like, yeah. like, like they, they had the 3D Mario games. They had 64 and Sunshine. Then they yeah. had Galaxy. That was the Galaxy phase. And now we have the new phase. Like yeah. we might see an Odyssey 2. You know, like yeah. that's the phase that we're in now. Yeah. So it's a, it's a completely different game, but it took a lot from Galaxy. Yeah. You know? No, I'm not saying it didn't learn anything. I'm just saying like it, what it did. Because like you couldn't turn into a tank in Galaxy. You True. couldn't, you couldn't uh, turn, run away from a realistic looking T-Rex in Galaxy. You couldn't throw your hat at stuff. You couldn't throw your hat at stuff. Can't, yeah, you can play fetch with the dog in Odyssey. Okay. No, you can't. You can jump on it. It's like petting with your feet. Oh, you can't. Yeah. You can't pet the cats in Fire Emblem Three Houses either. No, you cannot. Well, I don't want to touch a yeah, cat. Yeah, why would you want to pet a cat? I don't want to pet a cat. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you, uh, you can pet the yeah, horses in Zelda. Yeah. <laughs> what? You can pet the horses in Zelda. But not the dog. Still, you can't pet the dog in Zelda. Yeah. Nintendo's got a... 
You gotta fix no. their stuff. Yeah. I don't think so. No, he, he just leads you to, like, stuff. He, like, go sniff this, and he's like, okay, and then he goes, you can't. Zelda's got problems with pets. Yeah. Like, feeding the cat. What's the game where you gotta feed the cat? Twilight though? Princess. We talk about that. Fuck that game. Dude. For, like, that four game. hours, you gotta, like, feed the cat. <laughs> Piece of garbage. Stupid yeah. ass game. All right. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. One more. Make it good. Yes. Um, I don't know if you covered this already, but what do you think about like Ducktales being delisted? Oh, we never. Yeah, we never talked about that. Yeah, some people were. And I was kind of looking. That. I was actually like looking for it here to see if anybody had it physically. Um, that sucks. And like, that's a big problem with like digital games, licensed games. Um. See topics for YouTube channel. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's yes. topics for your YouTube channel. Though. Yeah, pe people don't want to go digital because they're afraid that games will just disappear. Yeah, um, I mean, when I when that news broke, I went home and I actually because I had it on PS3 from like PlayStation Plus and like I downloaded it immediately so it can stay there. Yeah, because yeah. that's that's another thing. Um, if you have it on your console, it's there. Yeah, you're gonna keep it, but uh, they they can't go into your PS4, or Xbox One and yeah. delete it. But um, if you buy it and you don't download it, then it could just disappear. Most of the time, you're okay. Mm -hmm. Like, if you buy it and don't download it and then it gets delisted, you can still download it because it's in your history. In, like, very rare cases, like PT, most famously, where they, like, just erase it completely. Mm -hmm. um, I I'm all digital on my Switch because I just want to be able to have all my games yeah. with me. Uh, and I make sure I have a giant memory card so everything's always yeah. there because... I'm not screwing around. Yeah, but I think I think that's gonna be a big problem with like games that change license holders. Um, so like Ducktales, like Goldeneye, like The Chronicles of Riddick. Um, I'm just like shocked that Ghostbusters is getting a remaster. To be honest with you, because I thought that game was lost to that generation. Uh, I am mostly all digital and like keeping all the games because like 10 years from now, yeah, I want to still have all those games. Yeah, you know, because we keep everything that we've ever had. Right. You know, except for. Like a handful. Luigi's Mansion. Yeah. <laughs> Which sucks, because now that game's $40. Jesus. For Luigi, for a launch GameCube game. You get the 3DS version for like 20-something. It's not the original version. <laughs> when Mario 64 broke the news that they were delisting it, like last yeah. week, it was $10 on Amazon. I passed it up. Try finding it now for near that. Oh, yeah. No, there's no way. It was like $3 on all the stores, on the digital stores if you want. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no way. Yeah. I think we have to leave. Okay. It's 4.30. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank That's you for chatting with us. We didn't do the show. <laughs> yeah. uh, we'll hang out outside yeah, we'll hang for, a out for a little bit. If you want to um, keep talking. Yeah. As long as we're not in the way. If you have more questions, feel free to ask us. And uh, otherwise, thank I gotta, you for coming. I got to run and buy that Mario 3, though. Yes, you do. But I'll talk to you guys first. Yeah. You can follow thank, him. Thanks for being Mario here, everybody. Right. Yeah. Like, share, subscribe. Hey. Woo. Hey. 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 Hey.